Question, what do cars eat for breakfast? Answer, batteries, especially if it's cold outside. Well, this may be how you feel about your vehicle, especially if you've had a battery issue recently. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about how to first off, protect your battery, charge your battery, get a jump start, and most importantly, how to test your battery to determine if it's a good battery or not. So stick around to learn all that information. So first off, let's talk about this thing with Subaru batteries. Is Subaru worse than other vehicles in eating their batteries? Well, I'm not so sure that's true, except for the special situation such as there was with the Subaru Ascents for the 2019-2020 year model. And there was an issue with those vehicles that they were just eating batteries left and right. Actually, there was a technical service bulletin put out for an upgraded battery with a bigger cold cranking amp capacity. Now this 2024 Subaru right here came with a 620 amp battery and it should be sufficient. But back on those models that had those issues, there was a problem with the ground on there. I think that was the final resolution to that. It's kind of hazy to what that was, but that's what I've been told. But those cars had problems with the batteries draining when they left the hatch open in the back. When uh, even Subaru would tell you that if you keep your key fob within a certain distance of your vehicle, your vehicle is going to try to keep communicating with that key fob and it's going to run your battery down. And in my owner's manual, it clearly states from Subaru that the vehicle should be cranked and driven at least every 13 days. At that point, that's when your battery will start to degrade to a point where you may not get the car cranked. So let's take those issues individually. If you have a Subaru Ascent from the 2019-2020 era, you probably have already been called in for a, either a recall or just an upgrade on your battery, especially if you've had battery failure. Now on all of them, if you have a battery failure under warranty, your 36 month, three year warranty, you should be able to get a battery from your dealer free of charge as part of your warranty. If you don't get that free battery, make sure you contact Subaru of America and ask for some goodwill. And they've been known to do that to help you out with that battery. So the other thing is the hatch. That is supposed to be uh, a non-issue, but you know, they do make aftermarket products now that will clip right in if you're gonna leave your hatch open, if you're tailgating or something like that, that they'll, these little aftermarket devices, and I'll try to find one and put a link to it down in the comments below, but that will keep your battery from running down. And I've seen just recently, I think it was last night, where an individual had a continual battery issue with their Subaru, could not find any problems, but eventually they found that they reprogrammed the transmission, the battery problem went away. So a lot of the battery problems that we see today could happen in any vehicle. And that is with lead acid batteries, if you let them run down, that's gonna start to degrade that battery permanently. And if your battery goes dead, two, three times, it's not going to charge back to full capacity and you're going to be stuck on the side of the road somewhere. Which leads me into the next thing I want to talk about. What happens if you do get stuck on the side of the road or in a parking lot somewhere and your battery is not strong enough to crank your vehicle? Well, I know many of you are going to say, will you grab the jumper cables or you ask somebody to come over with jumper cables and give you a jump on your vehicle? Well, that might work. It might also damage your electrical system or the other person's electrical system. So jumper cables are not the optimum way to do that. And the reason being is that most people will connect the cables to the running good car and then connect them to the dead car. And then they will crank up the dead car and then go and remove the cables. Well, what happens in the interim after the dead car cranks up is this alternator now is working and you have competing alternators working across those jumper cables and that can cause some damage. So if you must use jumper cables, what I would recommend is you do go ahead and hook the vehicles up and the good vehicle can be running 
and let it sit several minutes so that some charge can flow over into the weak battery and let that weak battery absorb some of the amperage, absorb some of that power. Then disconnect the jumper cables and try to crank your car. See if the car has got enough juice to do that. But that's not my recommendation for the optimum fix if you're stranded and you need to crank your vehicle. Jumper cables, I don't use them anymore. I use what's called a boost starter. And these devices here charge up. You can charge them up in your home. You can actually charge them up in your car using your cigarette lighter. And they contain a charge. This one here is, I believe, a thousand amp charge. And when you need it, all you do is take the two alligator clips, clip them to your battery, red to red, black to black, turn the device on, get in your car, and crank it. And your car should crank up at that point. And there's enough juice in one of these things to crank several dead batteries before you need to recharge it again. Hey, and even if your battery has no voltage, and this device cannot detect any voltage. It has an override that you can select and it will go ahead then at that point and provide the power to the battery to get you cranked. You, this is foolproof. You can touch the cables together. These two here can be touched together. There's no problem. You can hook these up backwards. It won't hurt anything. Of course, you will not get your car started, but it's really a no brainer on having one of these. They are not that expensive. I'm going to leave you links down below on how you can get these. And this brand is NOCO, and I swear by NOCO for all of my vehicle electrical needs. I really like this company here, so I'll leave you a link for those. My next scenario is that you're at home, and you go out to crank up your Subaru or any vehicle, and it won't crank. The battery's weak or the battery's dead. You're in no emergency to get anywhere. So if you have a battery charger, now you want to be careful and make sure it's a multi-stage smart charger, a charger that you can put on your battery and it will never damage your battery like this NOCO right here. You can put this battery charger on and it may take uh, a couple of hours to get it up to a charge where you can crank and get on your way and hopefully your alternator was going to charge your battery back and you'll be in good shape for then. The other thing is on these battery chargers is let's say that I had mentioned Subaru doesn't recommend letting your vehicle sit longer than 13 days without driving it. Well, maybe you're going on vacation or maybe you are injured and you can't drive for a few days or who knows, there's multiple reasons why you might not drive your car in 13 days. But go ahead and put it on the battery charger in your garage, out in your driveway, wherever you can get electrical power to that car hook up your battery charger and just let it sit. And you can watch the indicator lights go through and it's gonna show you when the charge is complete. But you can just leave it sit on your battery. It's not gonna hurt anything. It doesn't matter if it's hot outside or cold outside, it'll work just fine. Now, if it's cold, it's gonna to have to work a little bit harder because batteries don't like to be charged when, it's, when they're really cold, a lead acid battery. So the battery charger is a great way to maintain your battery. Now, you should be able to get four years life out of your vehicle's battery. And if you're putting it on a charger and keeping it, the battery fully charged, you may get five or six years, maybe more, I don't know. But batteries like to be resting when they're fully charged. That makes them live longer, <laughs> feel better, and have a happier life. So check out these battery chargers if you're in a situation to where you're gonna need to let your car sit. I saw two posts this week on Facebook that were really concerning to me. One of them was an individual thought they had a battery problem and their dealership said, well, we can diagnose that for $100. Well, to me, that's a little ridiculous. There's a lot of places, AutoZone and whatnot, that'll analyze your battery and do it for free, even if you don't buy a battery there. The other situation is that uh, someone was told that we can replace your battery here at the dealership, but it's like $489 for a battery. Well, again, batteries are not that expensive. So if we know the state of our battery, if we know the battery is good or bad, or maybe it just needs to be charged, maybe that's gonna save us some money. So what I'm gonna show you right now is this device here. This one is by Foxwell, but they're made by numerous 
companies will make these and these are battery testers. It'll test your battery, it'll test your alternator, it'll also test your starter in your car. So you can diagnose all three of those things and it's simple. It's made for any owner that can open the hood and connect the red to red and the black to black and follow the own screen instructions and you can test your battery and it's gonna come back and give you some data that you can look at and in plain language there, it's gonna tell you if the battery's good, bad, or needs a charge. So this right here, may, you may think it's complicated. It's not, it's easy. I use this and I get this one because it has a long cord on it. I can hook it up and I can sit in the car and use it from the driver's seat because if you're gonna check the alternator, it's gonna want you to crank up the vehicle while this is connected and it's gonna walk you through those steps, step by step to check the alternator. Same thing for the starter. It wants you sitting in the driver's seat to follow the instructions to crank the vehicle and it's gonna ask you to rev up the engine some and it's really amazing to what this little device can do. And these cost well under, you know, $100 or in that neighborhood, you can get cheaper ones, but you know, like anything, you get what you pay for. But this here can save you some heartache about not understanding the life expectancy of your battery and whether or not you need a new one. Now let me show you how easy it is just to check the status or condition of your battery. I'm just gonna pull this red cap off. That's just a protective cap. And you see the white stuff on it. That's just some protective grease that's on your battery terminals. And I'm going to take this uh, included alligator clips here. And we're going to go to red. Now that was the red cap. This here's the red terminal. And then over here, we're going to go black right down on the black terminal. As soon as I connect it, it's going to come up and provide a voltage reading, 12.56 volts. We're gonna to go to menu, battery test, press enter. 12 volt system, yes, press enter. Regular battery, press enter for yes. Out of vehicle, no, this battery is in the vehicle. So you do not have to disconnect your battery at all. Select enter. Are the battery terminal post on the top or the side? They're on the top. And this is a uh, regular battery, an AGM or a gel. We're gonna go with regular. Cool cranking amps is what we're gonna use. Press that. And we're gonna get the number of amps, which was 620. We're gonna Move this up to 620. <laughs> 620, press enter. Test is running. It says good battery. It gives you the voltage. You, it's, and it gives you the rating, 620 amps. And it says that this one is showing Get it back to this one's showing 867 cool cranking amps are available. And it's asking you if you want to go to the starter test. Well, I'm not going to show you that, but that is so simple as well. You just follow the instructions right there on this screen. In closing, if you're doing everything you should be doing to maintain your batteries and you're still experiencing draining issues, then you have to be aware of every battery usage that's going on with your car when you're not driving it. And that is every little light that might be left on, every door that might be left jarred, because when the door is jarred, it's going to have a light running, it's going to start draining the battery. Every time your hatch is left open, key fob is too close, uh, and I'm sure there's other things. I just went through and did a search on battery drain and the user's manual, and it came back with 15 or 20 different things to read about. So go through your owner's manual and see what it recommends how to do that. But when your battery gets to a state where it's 
on the downhill decline and it's no longer a good performing battery, the slightest thing is going to drain that battery down. But just be aware of what's going on. And the bottom line is that you may have to actually take your vehicle into a mechanic to have them check the system to see what's causing the drain. But at least from this video, I hope you understand how to determine the status of your battery and how you can charge your battery and how you can jump it if you need to. These new modern cars have so many computers in them, they just use the batteries up and you know, they actually are battery eaters. And I'm at the point that I'm thinking that these lead acid batteries are not sufficient for these newer cars. So let's see if it's gonna be coming down the road before long that actually uh, lithium batteries will go into cars because lithium batteries can go right down to almost a zero state charge and you can charge them back up to 100%. So there you have it. And just a matter of minutes, you learn how to boost your battery if you're dead sitting in a parking lot somewhere. You learn how to test your battery and your starter and your alternator, very easy to do. And you learn how to charge your battery and keep it in tip top performance, even if you're not cranking your car up every few days and driving it. So with these few tips here, I hope you are becoming a more confident Subaru owner, more confident driver. And like I said, this applies to all vehicles. If you have other brands, these devices will work on them as well. And it might help all the vehicles in your family to stay in tip top cranking, starting and running condition. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel, click that like button, and more importantly, share this video with your friends so your friends and neighbors can see it and maybe prevent them from having some battery issues down the road. So until next time, thanks for watching, stay safe and enjoy your Subaru.